Hello again, and thank you very much for joining me here at Movie Ninja. Today I'm going to be talking about the 2006 sci-fi avant-garde meditation that is Electroma. Now, if you saw the last video, uh, you saw that that was a reaction to the recent announcement yesterday, at the time of this episode's filming, of Daft Punk's retirement. Now, when I saw the short film, Epilogue, initially it was it was very powerful because of its silent storytelling. In terms of film, sometimes you may hear a film historian or a film critic say that sometimes less is more. And part of that has to do with the ancestry of films in and of itself. All films uh, in their modern context derived from silent films or ex French expressionist silent film. Uh, usually when we think of silent films we think of hyperbolic, exaggerated uh, pantomime or characters acting very over the top to a degree that that was part of the evolutionary process, but the very, very beginning, everything was experimental. Everything was silent. And the French have a very long and rich history of embracing that silence. So when you see these two characters, two characters within the context of Electroma, are hero robot number one and hero robot number two. I'm not making these names up. This is how they're described in official official media descriptions. Hero Robot number one and Hero Robot number two. Now, to describe a sci-fi avant-garde French-style art house film, as you may imagine, is a bit difficult. Particularly, how do you describe the acts? How do you describe the, the beginning, middle, and end? For Electroma, it's very challenging. So it is easier for me to describe what Electroma, when I saw it, because at first I looked into Epilogue and seeing like, wow, this is incredibly powerful cinematic storytelling. I looked a little bit deeper into it, and then I found out that there's this film that it originates from, Electroma. And with this particular type of film, it is easier to describe what it invokes. It is easier to describe exactly what is, not exactly, but to attempt to describe the abstractness of it, particularly being an art house film, or at least that's the way that it uh, came off to me, and that it is about individuality. It is about conformity. It is about alienation. It is about assimilation. It is about self-destruction, loneliness, <laughs> discovery, oblivion. I am trying my best to put forth what exactly happens in the film. What happens in the film is two robots journeying through what appears to be a southwestern town in the United States, attempting to break with conformity, being that all of the other citizens, inhabitants, whatever you would like to call them, they all appear identical to Daft Punk. Daft Punk, as a duo, they have a very noteworthy helmet style that both the artists have. And to do this, they go to a factory where it seems that some type of appliance is applied to their, uh, to their helmets to give them a caricature identity of humans. And from there, they are uh, seen in the robot equivalency of, of monsters, essentially. They are treated like monsters. 
they then discard their human likenesses, their human guises, and then take an extended journey through what appears to be the desert. Uh, I don't know the exact location. But that final trek is where we see, similar to the excerpt, which where the excerpt was derived for epilogue, we see that one becomes exhausted and then in a very sober and silent manner, you know, we're shown a very powerful gesture. One of the robots turns to the other and we, the audience, can see that there is a deactivation switch on the robot's back. If you've seen Epilogue, you see what happens immediately after that. Now, for what finishes the film, I'm at odds with just describing it because it's after that excerpt. Well, it's not an excerpt, it's part of the film. But after that portion of the film is finished, after this robot is left alone, there is an extended measure of meditation regarding the now individual robot's identity and what will happen to that robot now that it is alone. Now, being an art house film, this is not, nothing is concrete. A lot of this is a meditative journey. So this might not necessarily be for everyone. This is definitely very, very different. It's a sci-fi film, and I've talked about sci-fi films on this channel before. However, this is not with the same tonality or pacing structure. Being that it is meditative, I've used that word several times, being that it is meditative, it's a slow burn, you know. This is something that will require when you it will require extended thought while you watch it. You know? So I don't make any uh, I I love it. It's it's shocking, it's weird. Uh, there's a little bit of nightmare fuel in in the in the very middle of the film, but I love this type of silent storytelling that Forces introspective. You have to... Nothing is being hand-fed to the audience and there's no narrative characterization to hold your hand and tell you this is what this character is thinking, this is what's going on, this is what's happening, this is how things will end. It's all very interpretive and I really do like that. It reminds me a lot of Sans Soleil, um, which is another film I may talk about here at, uh, at a later time. But... Ultimately, this is, when I found out about uh, Daft Punk Epilogue, as many of us did yesterday, I was a bit bummed. But then I discovered something I, I, I had no idea even existed. And, and I was aware of their collaborations and visual albums before, but needless to say, you know, I was, I was, I was a little saddened, a little disheartened. But then I discover something new and enthralling and interesting and in its own way amazing. So, with regards to that, my score for Daft Punk's Electroma is a solid 8 out of 10. I think if you watch this film in the context of an art house film, you will enjoy it. And my recommendation for another sci-fi transcendental uh, silent meditation is Mamoru Oshii's Angel's Egg. It's an anime film. It is about a wandering uh, warrior who comes across a young girl living in the catacombs of a dying world and her only charge is to protect a single egg. So that's my recommendation along with this particular film, you know, is 
Mamoru Oshii for a mostly silent, very meditative uh, art film. Thank you very much for joining me here on Movie Ninja. If you enjoyed this review, please feel free to like the video and subscribe. And I hope you have a good rest of your day.